Good morning. How is everyone today? It is a fabulous um, bright day here in uh, Northern California. And uh, we've got some fun things going on today. So I am glad you're here. And as always, um, pop in and say hello. Uh, make sure that if you have questions as today goes along, that you'll um, put them in the chat box. And if I don't get to them on while the show is going live, I will go back and look at them and answer any questions that I can. And as always, others um, answer for me. So that's, that's awesome. So good morning, good morning, good morning. And today we're going to have some fun. I am taking this lesson that I'm doing today from a, a, a learn uh, project that is on the quilt show. And this was done by Sue Blywis. I hope I've pronounced your name right, Sue. And um, it looked like a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time looking at it, uh, pondering it, and then I did a bunch of them uh, a year or so ago. And uh, I will say, as we're getting started this morning, that this takes a little bit of practice to get exactly what you want. Um, sometimes I get lucky and I and I make one right away out of the out of the hatch, and I and it's wonderful and I love it. But most often I have to make a few, and then I kind of get into the groove of it. So as easy as this is. Um, this is a great way to show off your artistic talent and all of that. So today we're going to work on making postcards or note cards to send to um, to whoever you want to send them to. And um, thanks Pat, Dot, and Cindy for popping in and saying hello. I'm so glad all of you guys are here and Rondi as well. Um, and so note cards just simple plain I I got these I don't know maybe Michael's um, someplace like that just blank note cards and there are times when I want to send a personal note and it's kind of fun to send a piece of artwork along with it so um, Sue's idea was was great I have done a lot of sewing on cards and then when you sew on on the through the the front of the card then I usually cover the back side with something um, so that the stitching doesn't show but with the method that I'm going to show you today you don't uh, probably don't even have to do that because you could do all your sewing prior to um, gluing it down with Misty Fuse onto your card. So let's get started. I think most everyone is probably here by now. Let me switch my camera. All right, so I've got my note card here and I want to show you a couple examples um, very quickly that um, I threw together and one I had made um, back when I was working on this. This one is folded and I've done this both with fabric and this one was done with papers. And basically I just took little strips of, pa of paper or cloth, whichever you want to do. I folded it um, lengthwise in half and then I started in the center with um, an odd little maybe hexagon kind of thing. And then I just started working my way around and I just kept building it up and laying them until I was, until I had a fairly good sized um, circle or as big a circle as I wanted to. Then I went to actually a coloring book on this one and I cut out the flower shape that was in the coloring book and um, I used my X-Acto knife and opened that up and as you can see it's it's open underneath and um, when I pressed it down, I got a, even got a wrinkle in it. That's why I, I, I don't think I ever used it because I did wrinkle it. And it was kind of a practice thing. So this is one idea. And this is that opening that we did last week, that reverse applique kind of, kind of thing. So the reverse applique could certainly work here. And in fact, everything that, that I'm going to show you today, um, we've looked at or have done some things with already um, in the past. 
So that is one. Then um, for today, this was, I was playing around with um, a, a card um, and some drawing for Christmas. And so I just quickly drew this. I used, and um, I used my Derwent um, ink pencils. Uh, watercolor pencils where you can use them like colored pencils and then if you put water to them they give you a little bit of a watercolor effect so I was playing around with that and I decided to use it um, for this uh, this method and then this was just a, a simple collage thing um, I used paper some fabric washi tape um, and uh, so here again it it's really pretty much anything um, that you want to use and this one I'm in the process of doing along with you I I put it together um, a little bit so that you could kind of see what I'm doing it got a little crooked on me and um, so I probably won't send this um, but just use it but I want to share with you what I did I have this little bucket of strings is what I call them. This is when I square off my, you know, when I'm cutting for a quilt and I keep those because I use these end pieces and I'll put them on, you know, a gift bag. I'll wrap something in them, um, just bits and pieces of, of little things. And so I've got all these little strips and in this bag, I don't save any more until I've used up a bunch that's in it. Um, and then I'll fill it up again with, with stuff that I have. So it's just this little bag that um, is filled with these little strips that I use for squaring up. And I took those and I created a, a little picture on here um, with those, those pieces. And so I wanna just share with you the layers. This is, I left the parchment paper on the back because we're gonna lay our parchment paper down. Then I put Misty Fuse and I love this stuff. Um, it's like it's like miracle stuff to me. And so Misty Fuse is what I used, and it is a glue. And I don't know if you can see it. Um, yeah, I think you can. You'll be able to see a little bit of it in the um, on the camera. But it's just a, a web of glue, and it's very lightweight. And once you iron it down or put heat to it, um, it it basically disappears into your work. And so I put a piece of Misty Fuse down and then I just started putting my strings over the top. And once I had all the strings, I put another, I put a layer of Misty Fuse over that. Once I had that done, then I put the little house on and my little lollipop tree. And now the last part um, that's going to happen with this is that I'm going to put this piece of Misty Fuse over the, over the top of it. And you're going to see just it, it does disappear in that because right now you can kind of see a little bit of, of the glue. And I'm going to use parchment paper. And the reason I'm going to use um, parchment paper, which you can buy at the grocery store um, or departments, you know, the, the big box stores, um, is that if I used my gotta sheet or my silicone pressing sheet, I would get on the fabric and through that a very shiny look to it. And so I don't really want to get a shiny look um, on the top of this. I want it to be uh, more of a satin finish, if you will. So I use parchment paper because it will not give me a shiny um, a finish to the, the project that I'm working on. And especially if it's a little bit more of an art piece um, that, I'm, that I'm working with, then I certainly don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and press this just so that you can see um, how that's going to look when I am done. I just love this stuff. It's like it's like a miracle in a in a in a plastic bag. And so I have my iron hot and I'm going to run that over just until it gets good and melted um, in there. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to, to, to do it a long time, you know, as far as the heat. 
Um, I probably go over it a little bit more than I probably need to. Then I'm going to let it cool for just a second because if I let it cool, then the glue that is around the edges um, firm up and I don't have to pull it away. So while that is cooling off, um, here is another card um, that I did and I left it partially um, you know, open because I want to show you on the back is the glue um, that adhered to. I used a sheer fabric. Um, it was this yellow sheer and I like to put some type of fabric on um, the back side. It just makes it quicker and a little bit easier for me. So it's see-through. This one is is yellow um, and as you can see when you fold it together and put many layers it gets very yellow um, on that. On the card that I did um, here uh, you see those little silver dots in there. I used another sheer fabric that has little dots in it and that's what I used for my background um, and put it down. So there's there's all kinds of things that you can put on the back. You can put paper. Um, I like to use napkins sometimes um, for my backdrop because there are there are some wonderful napkins that or um, tissue paper is another thing. Let me see if I can, um, for example, at Christmas time, I find this tissue paper to be really um, pretty fun because it makes a nice backdrop. And once you put this down and put it into place, it pretty much disappears. And if you actually glued it down with a mixture of glue and water, um, it, it totally disappears except for the gold of the angels in this particular one. And I've showed you that method um, a couple of times before. Here's another piece of tissue paper. And again, it's got those little silver shiny dots in them. And that would make a great backdrop for a, especially a holiday card. And with Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up, I think this would be a great um, project to do. So let's just take a look. So I'm going to come to this and I'm going to pull that off. And as you can see, um, this is pretty much disappeared. Now I, I will need to go back and trim off the um, fabric or the uh, glue that has stuck around the outside edges. Um, and generally I don't trim my cards until this uh, part is finished and then it just trims off as I trim everything else. Um, so now this is completely sealed with that. You could put, um, I have picked up a, a few of these um, sheer pieces. You could put another piece over the top and press that down and then um, you would not um, have that, you know, that glue that's that's there and would, you know, if it was heated up again, why anyone would iron their cards that they got, I'm not sure. But you could put that, um, and this is a, this is a cream colored one. You could get, you can get them in all different shades of color. And so you can put anything over the top of that. And then that completely is sealed. And you have this lovely a piece of artwork um, over the top of this. And, you know, bits and pieces of things are terrific for this. So there, there is a finished piece that now you can, I'll take the parchment off the back and I can press it directly onto the front of the card and you can send a piece of artwork off um, to someone that you wanted to send it to. So here I simply took that sheer fabric. I put Misty Fuse down. I put the sheer fabric on top of that and then once I had done that I put another layer of Misty Fuse over the sheer fabric. I laid down this piece of silk and then I had just a few little scraps that were left over from a project that I throw into a little tray on my cutting table. When that tray gets full, I either use them up or they uh, get discarded so that I don't have so many, you know, little things laying around. So just a strip of, a couple strips of silk, 
a little piece of ribbon that was left over and this that I had cut off. And again, it's not, this is not um, blue ribbon worthy, but it's it makes for a lovely card and you've put some effort into it. So I started, just so it would stay in place, I started to press this down onto the front of the card. So, um, and it's got the, the glue on the top. So again, um, it's all Misty Fuse that literally um, disappears and adheres to the paper, fabric, um, all kinds of things uh, because it is a it is a wonderful glue and I'm kind of addicted to this stuff because it works really well with with textile um, pieces and stuff that I that I work with and so again I'm going to give that a second to cool and while that is cooling, I want to share with you some, you know, like napkins. A um, couple of years ago, I found these napkins for Thanksgiving. And for me, if I want to write a thank you for, uh, you know, to someone whose home I, I went to for Thanksgiving or over, you know, that holiday, I could put this on the front of that card very easily with simply a piece of um, Misty Fuse on the back and misty fuse over the top with some sheer fabric and that would make that would be an easy quick um, fun little card to to put together you know these napkins here's a, a christmas one that you probably could find something to do with um, i ran across these a few years ago and i really like it um, because it's it is a napkin but it's kind of like a quilt piece as well and so i can use this for a background and one of the things that I think I might want to do is use a section out of the center of that, do the reverse applique window, and um, as a uh, baby shower thank you. And then I would like to put a picture that I took on that day of the baby shower and put that underneath of that window and send um, a card to uh, the person who had planned that. Or you could do pretty much anything that you want to as far as your imagination can, can really let you go. And um, so here we go. It's pulled off. There is, you know, no sign of that misty fuse there at all. Um, and you've got this, this card uh, that, you know, um, whichever way you want to turn it. Um, that was very simple to make. It just took a couple of minutes, um, literally, because everything was already cut. It was pretty much the sizes that I, that I already wanted. And uh, I shredded the edges of that to pull some of those threads out. But that's, that's probably the most effort that I did and, and got this card that now can be sent to someone. All right. Then I just also, if you want the, the process from start to finish, I threw some things together. I tend to make a little seascapes. In Sue's instruction that you can get off of the, um, the website, um, thequiltshow.com, it's under learn. And um, Kristen might uh, put up a link, I don't know, to that. But if you go into um, the website, and you go into the learn section and you follow your way down and put in the search engine um, Sue um, Blywis um, and it's um, B-L-E-I-W-E-I-S-S. -S. Um, you're gonna get that and she explains the same process basically in those instructions. So she um, talks about putting down cheesecloth um, I decided I'd use some cheesecloth for my sky and sometimes when I'm doing this I like to um, pin it so that it stays because cheesecloth has a tendency to to shrink in um, you know she put them in, in little piles and and things like that um, which is great so I've got my card I've got my little pieces that I want to use so the first thing that happens again 
is that I am going to put down, and I have to find my little pieces that I cut. It's hard to see. So I'm going to put my parchment paper down. And then on top of that, I have cut a piece of Misty Fuse about the size that I want to use. And then I'm going to put my cheesecloth down. And if I want to make this an ocean or a lake or, you know, put mountains or something on it, I'm going to put my, you know, next piece along there. Um, if I want some, you know, look like waves on a, you know, on a beach or something, I'll add um, a bits and pieces of maybe, um, this is a little piece of yarn. Um, I have a few friends who knit and I have um, their little scraps that are left over. Um, they're very generous with me and, and let me use those because I am not a knitter. I've tried. Um, and I, I just don't seem to get the hang of it. And then I'm going to just use strips like if I was at the beach and playing in the sand and I'm laying the I'm just simply laying those across there and here at this point um, I could add some other things um, to this but right now I want to secure this in place so then I'm going to take my piece of parchment paper I'm going to lay that over the top and you want to make sure that everything is well covered because you don't want your iron to get any of the misty fuse on it. Um, kind of tough to get off. And then for good measure I'm going to turn it over so that I, you know, I hit that misty fuse that really is on the back side of this. All right, so I've got that completed. Um, pull the parchment paper off, and now that's that is secure um, onto the parchment paper, which again, as you has have seen, it pulls away. And now I can go ahead and add other things to this, whatever I might want to, whatever I think I would find on a beach, um, something like that, or I could add some some mountains to this. Again, what's really cool is that as you put the next layer of Misty Fuse on before you start, and I'm going to center this um, so that I get um, the Misty Fuse pretty much where I'm going to trim this, then I could sprinkle this mica dust, I could use washi tape, I could, um, there's, there's lots of things. Um, that I could add to this. If I had a little shell or something like that, I could all put whatever on top of this and then press, uh, put another sheet of Misty Fuse over that and press it all in and um, finish it off possibly with, um, you know, some type of sheer fabric or paper or whatever, you know, however I wanted to finish that off. And, you know, these little silk threads that run through, um, they could be, you know, those little pieces could be added somewhere in there um, to give a little bit more of a, of a beach scene or, you know, it's really wherever your imagination can take you. Um, And, you know, the question is, I never put anything over the top of my postcards. Why do we need to? You don't. This is just an idea. And um, it's, it's just something that, um, it's just another thing that we can do. And especially if you have little pieces of artwork that you can work at, you can um, 
put that on. I have little pieces of ribbon. I have these skeleton leaves that you can that you can purchase if for if it's for Thanksgiving or for fall. They come in little packages where you can buy multiple um, pieces of that. Um, and then um, this was a napkin that I was using for another project. It's got a, a pretty iris on it. Um, and I could certainly um, use something like that um, to put there. There's these, you know, little flowers and things that you can um, pick up and put on um, whatever you wanted to do to, to make your own personalized card uh, to send to a friend. So those are, those are ideas, those are possibilities, and it's pretty endless. And again, washi tape, um, whatever that you might want to use to um, make something um, like this, for um, sending like Christmas cards, for Thanksgiving, for holiday, and give them that very much uh, of, of, of an effect um, to your project. And there's a question, does the Misty Fuse have glue on both sides? Misty Fuse is glue. That's all, that's what this is. There is no sides to it. It's um, a glue that is, like a spidery web and once you put heat to it it melts and sinks into whatever you are using it for um, and it's it's really just a web of glue and it's it's really like you know the other um, you know one-sided you know fusible um, except that there's no paper on either side. It's just the glue and it's very strong. You can um, glue many, you know, like I said, paper, fabrics, textiles, um, yarns, um, anything that you want to glue down um, because it is simply a web of glue for that. Um, let me see if there was any, any other questions. Um, and so the, the sheer material that I just um, showed, um, it's organza. Um, and you can purchase that at you know, a fabric store. And like I said, this is a cream color. They come in many colors. Um, I just happened to pick up that because I use a lot of that type of things. Um, and uh, there is no link to the fuse material, the Misty Fuse that I'm using, but if you go to the uh, quilt show, um, thequiltshow.com and go into the store part um, under the Saturday sampler, it'll be really easy to find the Misty Fuse um, at that point. So, uh, you know, be sure that you know check that out um, because the products that I that I use here as if they have them in the store they'll list them so it's easier for you to find those products um, and if and if you go under Saturday sampler and one that specific instead of you know searching through all of the shop then you'll then you'll find them a little bit quicker and a little bit easier of the the materials and the products that I'm using on um, on the show at the time. So I absolutely love Misty Fuse. Um, and uh, there's a question just popped up. Do we sell the parchment paper? I don't believe we do, but you can buy it at the grocery store where you buy your Reynolds wrap or your Saran wraps or, or whatever. It's parchment papers there. Um, it's used to line, um, you know, cookie sheets. Um, so your cookies come off easily. So it's, uh, you know, it's just parchment paper. In fact, this is what the box looks like. Um, I have it. I use it uh, a lot with, um, especially if I need more than one um, silicone pressing pad. The reason I'm not using the um, pressing sheet today, the goddess one, you know, the silicone pressing sheets, is because when you use that with Misty Fuse or any other fusible and you're pressing right directly onto and that glue is pressing into the fabric, it leaves a shiny sheen to it. And I really didn't want the shine um, that it leaves when you're using the silicone mat. And so the parchment paper, 
which is Reynolds Kitchen's par parchment paper, um, is, is all it is. And you can get it at the grocery store. It does not leave the shine. It, it leaves a satin or um, uh, finish to it so that you don't, you don't see that you've ironed something onto that. So um, again, this is just a, a fun project that you can use to those little bits and pieces of fabric. You can also try different, um, you know, quilting methods. Um, a small block on there would, would be lovely, especially in the reverse applique. And you can use your own um, artwork to send a specialized card and it becomes a gift to the person that you're sending it to. So it's just another possibility that you can um, use for, um, you know, those little bits and pieces and those little scraps that are left over and um, have something that is very fun and it's just fun to do. If you need inspiration in between your quilts or you need a break from a quilt, which sometimes I often do, uh, just to get those creative juices flowing, this is quick. It's easy. It's fun and you can put it together um, very quickly. And so I hope you've enjoyed this. And so next week we have another um, little project that we can um, both quilt and make. That's a possibility for quick gifts that you might need as teacher gifts um, to give to a quilting friend, um, whatever. So uh, I look forward to next week being with you again. And if there are any questions, if there's anything that you um, weren't quite sure of today, then please um, put it in the chat box or add it on the YouTube section and I will get back to you. And always post what you do if you can on the forum. That's It's a great place for all of us to see your work and really look forward to seeing some of that as the weeks go by. So have a wonderful, wonderful week and a great Halloween tomorrow and we'll see you back next week. Bye.